In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the import XML function in Google Sheets. So the import XML function is a powerful function that allows you to import data from structured data types like XML, HTML, CSV, and some other options. So if you want to scrape a website or mine data from different websites, you can do this directly in Google Sheets using this function. So before I show you how to set up the formula, I'm just going to go over the basic syntax of the function. So this is the syntax of import XML. There are only two arguments. The first argument is the URL, and this is the URL of the page that you want to import data from. And so it must include the protocol or, or the HTTP, HTTPS. And you can put this URL argument directly into the function, at which point it needs to be wrapped in quotation marks, or you can reference a cell that contains the URL. The next argument of the function is the XPath query. And what this is, is this is the XPath query to run on the structured data. So XPath, if you're not familiar with XPath already, is a language that is used to query data stored on a website. So in order to return the data you want, you will need to use the correct XPath query to return the information that you are looking for. So I will go over some basics of XPath query, but first let me show you how to use this function quickly. So what I'm going to do is use this function on this Wikipedia page. It's just a Wikipedia page about elephants. Don't ask me why, but I will import data from this. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this URL into my file just so I can use the cell reference of it. And then I will set up my function. So it's equals import XML and then I press tab to enter the function. So the first argument is the URL. And so I'm just gonna put in the cell reference of this URL. And then the next argument of the function is the XPath query. So comma and inside quotation marks, I'm going to return all of the H2 elements on this page. So I'll just do H2, so it's slash slash H2 add my closing parentheses and now here I have imported all of the h2 elements so with XPath query what we are doing is we are just putting in the XPath query of the data we want to return so let me open up this page and then what I'm going to do is right click and view page source So this is the structured data of this web page. This is all of the HTML. So what you are doing is you are using different selectors with XPath in combination with the elements on the page that you want to return. So in this example, this double slash here is a selector and this H2 is the element that I want to return. And that is why this returns. So if I come to one of these um, H2 elements and I expect inspect it so etymology you can see etymology is wrapped in an H2 so it's helpful to be comfortable with HTML um, in order to use this function so you can see this is wrapped in an H2 so this is an H2 element and that is why it's returned with this so again I am going to go over some basics of XPath However, I'm not going to go into too much detail. So with XPath, you have different options for selected elements. So the one I used is the double slash, and this will select the elements in a document from the current element that matches the selection. You could also do a single slash, and this would select from the root element. A dot will select the current element two dots will select the parent of the current element and then an at will select all attributes so you can use this um, in some specific ways so if i was to do a double slash and an h1 this would select all of the h1 elements if i was to do a double slash and a p this would select all of the p elements and if i was to do an at sign and then class 
and equals, you would select all of the elements that match the specified class. So there are a ton of ways to use selectors in combination with the elements to pull specific data from your page. And that is how to use the function. So just to give you a few more examples on different ways we can use it, I will just pull some different information. So this first one, I pulled all the H2 elements. You could also pull all of the H3 elements. It would just be changing this. If you want to pull the title, you could also pull that. So there's title, and this just pulls the page title. If you want to do all of the internal links, you would do at href. And this is pulling all of the internal links. Now you can also pull data from specific tables. So if you're not familiar with HTML, TR stands for table row. So this will pull table information. And then TD is table data. And what you can do is you can add some predicates to your formula to pull specific data. So if you don't want to just pull everything, you can add a one, and what this one will do is it, it means to return the first element. So this formula here, tr slash td1, will return the first table data element from each table row. So let me press enter, and we will see what happens. So sometimes you will have to um, change up the location of your cell reference because the data is trying to expand to too many rows. So this function returns an array and you need to have enough empty cells in your um, spreadsheet that the function can expand its data fully. Otherwise you'll get that error. So again, what this now does, tr td1, is it means to return the first table data element from each table row. So let's look at this. There's kingdom, phylum, class, order. And if I go back to this page and we look at this first table, this is the first element from each table row. Kingdom, phylum, class, order. Now watch what happens if I change this to a two. So we'll return the second element from each table row. Now we're returning Animalia, Core Data, and some other information. And you can see this is just taking from the second data element from each table row. So again, this is not meant to be an XPath tutorial. XPath can get pretty advanced. If you're just calling basic things, it's very easy. If you want to learn XPath, I recommend you go to W3 Schools and check out their guides. What I didn't cover in this post is some more advanced options on predicates. So I did cover one, which selects the first element. Um, but there are these more advanced predicates that you can learn to call more specific things. Um, this video is just meant to be a brief intro to XPath and mostly focusing on the import XML function. So that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you can now see um, the power of using import XML, but to get the most out of it, you really do need to be comfortable with XPath. The function itself is very easy because there's only the two arguments, but learning the proper syntax to call the information that you want can take a little bit of time. So just take your time with it and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.